back to school. That's what he's teaching the golden rule. American history and practical man. You study him hard, hoping to pass. Working your fingers right down to the bone. And the guy behind you won't leave you alone. have a choice. You go to school or you go in. Huh? Get into class. Huh? Get into class. Get into class. Get into class. Get into class. They don't teach us nothing here, but yet still they expect us to be in class all the time, you know. And then as soon as we get ready to, you know, try to better the school, they're ready to throw all of us in jail. But I mean, like, he won't face you face to face, you know. If, if you was a student around the school, you wouldn't want to have no police coming around and harassing you all the time. Uh, six hours a day, police harassing you? Uh-uh. That ain't for nobody. I don't care. Black, white, pink, blue, I don't care what color you is. You can't even walk across the street without them coming down on you like that. The students in school feel neglected don't feel like they can come to school and go to classes and study properly without people stopping them at the door, asking them for ID cards. It's a concentration camp. Your studies are directed or isolated. You learn about English and English grammar. And then over here, you learn about mathematics. And over here, you learn about some crazy psychology that doesn't have a damn thing to do with what your mind works like. Then you get into high school, and it isolates you from what's happening in the world. While you're reading about the lies of the Declaration of Independence, while you're reading about George Washington, you know, you know what's going down outside. You know about the war that's going on in Vietnam. You know about what's going down in Latin America. You know about what's going down in Africa. But you don't know this from what's going on inside that school. Then you're isolated into a trap. You know, and if you go into college, well, then you're heavy into it. You know, you're really making it. Which cuts you off from the other people who are in a little bit below you in business administration. I want to come back to me and set me free. Help me get back on my feet again. So I can be a man and understand. Face my tomorrows like a natural man. Face my tomorrows like a natural man. School is a drag. It makes us compete against each other for bullshit things like IQ tests, grades, football teams, cheerleading teams, student body offices. It makes us compete and act alone because they know that individuals are easier to control than groups. School is nothing but a pacification program and no amount of those extracurricular activities and new books or teaching methods can change the fact that the schools just don't meet anybody's real needs. try to make education real in a real world. Because you can't study things standing still because nothing stands still. You know, like, a, like an educational system, you know, is like geared for one or two things. It's geared to change or it's geared to maintain. And the one we're in now is geared to maintain. I can't stand the no, I can't stand it, nothing from nothing, leave nothing. So we go out, this, we go out in this world with nothing in our heads and we don't get a job, dig it? The people of America have always been told that the government tries to meet their needs. But looking around, we can see that in every case this isn't true. Education doesn't meet our needs. 
Because like every other institution in this society, education just serves the corporations to politically and economically run our lives. In this way, students don't control their schools. Neither do their parents or the communities that they live in. Our education, our whole education is controlled by the corporation owners and by their boards of education and the state legislators that work for them. Uh, big businesses use the educational system to fill their manpower needs and then they can guarantee their profits because they need bureaucrats, engineers, technicians to supervise profit making. They need secretaries, factory workers, clerks and mechanics. They're the ones that make the profits. And then they need the military to protect them. The main way that the corporations uh, get what they need from the schools is through the tracking system. This tracking starts in grade school. We get reading and IQ tests. And the tests are figuring out our intelligence by comparing everybody's score to the scores of white privileged suburban kids. But the thing is that the majority of the kids in grade school don't come from this privileged minority. See, the majority of the kids in grade school come from white working people's neighborhoods or black and brown communities. And since they don't have the same background, since they don't grow up the same uh, as the kids that they're compared to for the test scores, they don't come out as smart. None of these tests are games. See, because they're the main thing that decides what track we go through school on. So students from more privileged homes, well, they get put on the academic track. And then they get separate and some better education. And of course, they go on to college. Uh, if you're black or brown, or if your family's not so well off, then you get put on a vocational track. And what comes out is that you train only enough for the military or for low-paying jobs, and, and what else is left? Unemployment. And if you're a girl, your education is just geared to an early marriage and a lifetime job in the home. Things like military and company recruiting, most of the counseling, uh, charm schools and some work-study programs, all these things go along with the tracking to serve the corporations because helps them select an educated few to become the bosses over labor. While the majority of us, those of us in the lower track, just come out to be workers in their cheap labor force and continue to create more and more profits for the corporations. Another thing about tracking is that it gets kids used to always being at the top or always being at the bottom. Uh, the majority of us, black, brown, and most white kids, are at the bottom. And fighting among ourselves because of like race differences, or the neighborhood that we come from. See, this is the worst thing that we can do because it helps the man. See, it keeps us apart and it makes us much easier to control than if we were to fight together against the things that hold all of us back and keep us separated. They never did teach me anything. We wanted them to move faster with our 17 demands because they stayed two weeks, you know. And like, we're not waiting for an answer in two weeks. They can do that. They can, get, they can figure out an answer by the next day. Actually, there is no strike in progress at all. It's against the law for our students to strike. Students of high school age, for the school code, calls for them to uh, be in regular school attendance. And so there is, in effect, no strike at all.
Every time the student starts to protest something, one of them dumb suckers go in there and lock their door and go call the pigs. That's what they do. Lock their door and call a pig. Then when the pigs come in, they get out talking this jive about clear the halls and get off the street, get off the streets and all this, all this propaganda, you know. I'm sure that, uh, that the demands as they are written uh, do not reflect entirely young people's thinking. There is obviously adult direction and... I'm gonna talk this shit about, about they putting stuff in their head. They didn't put nothing in our head. We wrote the 17 demands. Mission students wrote the 17 demands. Not nobody from the outside or anything. We were just getting outside support. and behavior of some of these young people uh, disturb us at times. You know, whenever they like, whenever they like, you know, see something that they don't like or anything, well, they just like shut you off. And they, they, throw, they either suspend you or throw you out of school, or they like will have you arrested. I got kicked out for trying to get demands through it. See, they figure this way, if they can scare us with suspension, you know, we'll keep the thing uh, yes. calm, you know. You know, he threatened me, said that if I, I go around and start getting the students hot about the strike and everything, that they're going to, not only suspend me, but they're going to recommend me to go to jail. What they're trying to do is just bust a few people, you know, you know, send them away, suspend them and all that. So then the other people, they're going to scare up and they're going to say, well, uh, and since all this is happening, I don't want to get suspended or I don't want to go to jail. So, well, see, they can get you on any chunked up charge. They can say I was coming around to school, I was, uh, Passing out papers illegally on the corner. I was in the, I was in the school breaking windows. I was yeah, you know, all yeah. stuff to get you up there. They'll try to hang you up real good. time they try to do something, Mr. Steinbeck or Mr. Christ will call the um, pig department in, and, um, and everybody backs down and gets scared. But um, I don't care. If, if, if it get hot, the pig want to fight, they just get a fight. I'm going to fight them, every one of them. Once we recognize the fact of what the system is trying to do to us and what has manipulated us, then where do we stand and how do we, you know, what do we do? What this means in terms of work is that we've all got to organize. And this is why a really important thing for us to do is education and to present the demands in the school in a way that is very educational. Like you can set a demand such as open admissions to college and explain the whole tracking system and explain why they can't give you open admissions to college because you are tracked into different jobs. You're tracked into white collar jobs, you can tracked into blue collar jobs, and you track into the army directly. And this is why the educational means is very important through the whole whole organizing of the high school. We want to control that school and make it relevant to us. Schools must be made to serve the people teach the true history of this country and its people and of the struggles of working people and all foreign oppressed people at home and abroad. Prison-like school buildings and rules must be done away with and all police must be withdrawn from the schools. All of us here in this room have got to educate ourselves politically and socially. You know, we can't do this in the school because the schools, you know, don't give you that kind of an education. And what we have to do is uh, go outside into the streets where it is. I think we have to make the point clear that we cannot change the high schools without changing society. Right. Huh? Not only within the high schools, but uh, yeah. outside and like yeah. join with other movements in, in creating uh, yeah, a new society. On what the best way to start moving on the system is to learn from the struggles of the black and brown kids. They're getting it on because they got it worse than any of us. And we gotta support them. We gotta unite with them against the shit that's keeping all of us down.
It's when kids get out and teach each other shit, you know, because the school ain't going to do it. They're going to have to teach each other and uh, begin to get together, you know, because uh, potentially there's strength, man. There are more kids in this country in high school today than ever have been before, and they make up a huge percent of the population. And they get together, and uh, they get organized, and uh, organized in a school, and then organized in a town, and city, and a county, and uh, across the nation, man. Uh, it's all over, you know. Uh, then they're in a position, they got power, you know. They say, uh, dig, Jack, uh, this school's ours, man. It's ours, you know. Uh, and we're going to make it serve us, and that's all there is to it. We be 